Well, there is the Citizen Front Motor Kit on the Aventon bike. It'll fit pretty much on any bike that you can swap these RST guide forks onto, or if your bike already has RST guide forks with a 135 millimeter dropout, front motor kit will work. But it's pretty easy to swap them on this Aventon bike. And we're just out cruising around before it rains. It's gonna rain on me here very soon. I gotta get home. Here's Aventon's acceleration. Okay. Here's a dual motor one, in case you want to go a little faster. Takes off, nice. Thirty-one uphill. What's going on, everyone? A couple quick updates on the front motor kit. The orders have been coming in, so thank you. Good to see that there's some interest in this all-wheel drive conversion kit but along with the orders have been coming in questions as well. So I thought I'd take a couple minutes here and just answer a few quick questions. And the first one is using batteries of different voltage. People are saying, I've got a 48 volt battery, a spare one or a spare 60 volt. Can I use that with your kit? Well, my kit's designed to work with a 52 volt battery. So if you put a 48 volt battery on the kit, you're gonna be undervolting it. It's not gonna be as powerful as intended. Yes, it will work. It just won't be as powerful. Now using a 60 volt battery, now you're over volting the system. So yes, it will work, but you're gonna be running a lot more power through there. It's gonna be running hotter. It's gonna be more wear and tear on the motor windings and the internals. So it's not, not advised that you do that. It's designed to work with a 52 volt battery. So that's what I suggest that you use. And that's why I offer a kit option that includes a battery. I want it to be a kind of a one-stop place where you could get everything you need to make this front motor kit work. Here's my battery right here. 52 volt, 15 amp hour battery pack, Samsung cells. And also importantly, this battery pack is designed to handle the draw from my controller. So you gotta make sure the battery management system you're using can handle my 45 amp controller I'm using. That's the one, this one can do that. This one can handle the 45 amp draw. So that's why I suggest it. I mean, if you don't have a battery you're certain of, I would go with the full kit option that includes the battery. It's only 320 bucks more to get this battery. And if you go search for a battery with these specs, 52 volt Samsung sells 15 amp hour, handle a 45 amp current draw. I mean, you'll spend close to 500 bucks trying to find this aftermarket. So I think it'd be best just to get the full kit if you need a battery. Now, the next question coming in a lot has to do with the forks. Will this kit work on this bike? Will it work on that bike? Do I have to change my forks? What I can say there is just plan on swapping out your forks to the RST guide fork. That's the one that has the dropouts that are thick enough to handle a geared hub motor. Some folks are asking, well, my, my uh, bike has a double crown fork on it. Is that strong enough? Well, that part doesn't really matter. What matters is the dropout on the fork, right? This piece right here on these guide forks, this is really sturdy and really thick. I've got another fat bike fork right here. I think I took this off like a, maybe a magic cycle cruiser bike. And if you can see the difference in these two dropouts, look at the size difference between those. That's why I say use the guide fork because it is so much beefier, so much larger than your typical dropout. If I tried to put my kit motor in this fork, you would snap those dropouts off the first time you hit the throttle. Trust me, I know I've done it more than once. This would never be able to handle that motor. It's a 750 watt geared hub motor. This one has been able to handle it. Again, the size difference is just drastic. So where do you get RST guide forks? Well, I've ordered a couple sets from a couple different places. This one is from Amazon, actually. And um, the set I put on the Aventon bike was from another website, and they're, they're pretty much the same sizing. The only difference was this one has 95 millimeters of travel. The other fork had 75 millimeters, and that's just kind of the, you know, the mount it squishes. So this fork from here to here ended up being like an inch longer. That was really the only sizing difference. So I don't know that it really matters um, the amount of travel in the fork. All you really need is the strong dropouts. So this one was way cheaper than the other website. On Amazon, I paid like, I think 125 bucks for this. The other thing you wanna take a look at though is the length of the steer tube. This one's about 230-ish millimeters, like nine and a quarter inches. 
and where that comes into play is when you slide this up into your headset, you got to make sure enough of this is sticking out the top that you can get your handlebars clamped onto it, right? So it doesn't matter if it's a little bit longer, you can just add extra spacers in there. But if it's too short, then you got a problem. You can't clamp your handlebars on. So you have to take the measurement on your bike from top of the fork to the top of the steer tube. See how long that is. Make sure the RST guide fork you buy has a long enough steer tube to fit your bike. Now, just so everyone is aware, I am working on putting together a third option for the front motor kit that will include RST guide forks. Again, I want to try to make it as simple as possible. So keep an eye out for that coming. Now, some other questions that have come up have been about the controller wiring. So let me show you that really quick. Right here's my controller, 45 amp KT controller. And the plug's coming off here. So this one here is just goes to your, your main wiring harness that goes up to the display. This is the XT60 that connects to your battery. You've got two orange plugs here, one's for a tail light, one's for pedal assist. I don't include either in the kit. Uh, I don't know what tail light's gonna be on your bike. So, you know, you can go out and find a matching tail light if you wanna use a tail light and the pedal assist. I just find it really dangerous when the front motor of this power is connected to pedal assist. Because if you accidentally rotate those pedals and you weren't expecting it, that front tire is going to start spinning and it's, it's pretty dangerous. So I'm not including a pedal assist sensor. I also don't really know how you'd wire up two different pedal assist, pedal assist sensors on one bike. So if you really want that, I'll leave it up to you to figure that out. But I designed the kit to kind of be just a power boost for climbing a hill or accelerating quickly whenever you need it just by punching the throttle. Third, or the last wire that comes off is the motor wire. This motor wire is eight feet long. So you'll be able to mount this controller anywhere on the bike and have plenty of slack to reach the front wheel. Now, another question that came up was, what if you are mounting the controller in a different spot than the battery? Well, this is the length of the battery wire coming off the controller, right? And then coming off of my battery, you can see the length of that battery wire. So if you're gonna mount them further apart than this, then you're gonna to have to create a little uh, just extension cable there with XT60s on the end, just to, if you wanna put these farther away from each other. So I'll leave that to you guys as well. I don't know where people are gonna mount these, but you've got probably, I'm gonna say, I don't know, 20, 20 inches or so of wire there. You can separate these two. Everything's using XT60 connectors. Yes, a charger is included. It's gonna be a three amp battery charger. And what are the questions? I think that might've been the main questions. I hope I'm trying to get to emails and comments on the videos as quick as I can to give you guys the info. And again, I'm anticipating these shipping out to customers in May. I'll let you know if anything changes on that timeline, but as of right now, everything's on track. Hopefully this video gave you some more good info and maybe answered a couple of your questions. I am going to do a more thorough detailed install video as soon as I decide what bike I'm going to put it on next. Right now it's still sitting on the Eventum bike, but I got to get it off there because that's the wife's bike. She doesn't want it on there. So I'm going to take it off that. I'm going to put it onto another bike. I've already showed it on the wired. I've showed it on the Eventum. I mean, it'll fit pretty much any fat tire bike that you switch out those forks on. Um, so let me know in the comments what bike you want to see it next. Last video, people said Ariel Kepler. I saw, I think a vote in there for a rad, one for Himiwe Zebra. Uh, I really like to know what you guys want to see it on, and I'll try to I'll try to get that bike and do fork swap, controller, or detailed install, and everything, so you can see exactly how this goes. But if you're interested, check it out on the website citizenperformance.com, and maybe pick one up for yourself so you have it in time for summer. Thanks for watching.